Train the muscles, not the joints. He-Man with cat hair. Cat hair He-Man. Right, this battle cat's hair. It's not actually real cat hair, it's battle cat hair. Hello there fellow Galantians and welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding and today I'm going to take you through a workout. I'm doing a really weird eclectic workout tonight. I'm doing some upper chest, I'm going to do some triceps and I'm going to do some leg presses for legs weird workout for me but at the time of filming this workout which was actually a month or two ago I actually filmed this thing a, a month or two ago because I got so much film footage that I haven't even showed you guys I got so much footage but this is one of those workouts that I didn't show you yet but I'm gonna show you now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through my new beat funkin it up that's what it's called funkin it up and I'm gonna explain to you what I'm doing here I'm doing some inclines and I'm squeezing up at the top a little bit more than usual just because that's fun for me and that's why I'm going a little bit lighter I'm just going a little bit lighter just to get a pump right so this is really a pumper workout for me and really what you want to do when you're training is sometimes you'll have these intense workouts where you're pursuing strength or you're pursuing uh, extra high volume or whatever and then you'll have these workouts where you're just pumping it up <music> Squatch. Now I went from doing five sets of chest inclines there and then I went over to doing some close grip bench. Now this is a weird combination for me. Usually I'm doing chest back and legs and then I'm doing the other body parts and I'm doing full body workouts and then I go back and forth from full body workouts to two day splits and I go back and forth in this. So uh, sometimes I'll push my body over train a little bit and then I'll go back to a two day split to give my joints a little bit of rest and start to uh, pump up. Maybe I do an extra little bit of volume or maybe I stay with the same amount of low volume and then get a little bit more rest to get my body to catch up with recuperation. So this is a strategy that I use. Again, it always depends on a case per case basis, depending on what is going on with your body. And this really comes down to the point of experiencing your body fully and really learning to listen to what's happening. So for instance, with this close grip bench, a lot of guys on the internet are like, hey, you're not going all the way up. You're not coming all the way down. What the hell's wrong with you? But basically what I do is I contract and stretch the triceps but once I feel like straightening the elbows even more starts to bring in the delts and I start to hit failure in the delts, it's no, there's no point to me coming up further. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that my triceps hit failure and nothing else. And that's where this range of motion comes from for me. For you, it will be different. But remember, trust the feeling. Learn to connect to the body and start to feel where is that stress? Where are you hitting failure? And that's going to guide you to getting big time gains and results. You know, the Galantian type results. Galantian results. You know, you know, the results that you guys have? The Galantian stuff. Yeah. Mountain. Mountain.
trained by osmosis. <laughs> So as you can see in the press downs, I take a few steps back from the machine just to change the angle on the tricep and that hits a different head. Now when I step forward, I'll start to hit a different head of the tricep. So I'll mess around. Sometimes I'll keep the elbows back. Sometimes I'll keep the elbows forward and this helps me get a full pump. So as you can see now, I'm closer to the machine I'm bent over a bit and I'm keeping the elbows forward. And now when I contract, I'm hitting a different part of the tricep. And this is also where I get a bit of an ab workout as well. So some of you guys ask me if I train abs. So I do get some ab work in this. As you notice, I'm rounding the spine. See, see, you see that? Well, I can't be a rock star forever, you know? There was a time when Kyle used to work on the machine as I was training, like I was something special. Now he's just leaving the gym and just like, ah, oh, that's just, uh, that's just old ass natural galant bodybuilding right there. Who cares? Who cares, man? So anyway, yeah, it was good while it lasted, Kyle. Thanks, man. Thanks. So you got bigger things to do, bigger fish to fry. I understand. And I am trying to fry my triceps right now, speaking of frying. So I'm continuing with these angles. I did about five sets. I just decided to do a little bit more of a high volume workout. This is a little bit higher volume than I usually use, uh, even in a two day split. Usually I'll only do about four or five sets. And sometimes I'll do the 10 set thing when I want to increase the volume, but I don't stick with that forever, right? So sometimes I just feel like an area needs to be uh, worked on a little bit more and I'll do a strip set just like I'm doing here. I'll actually strip the weight down and I'll do multiple sets and just really burn those muscles out. So I try to hit those slow twitch fibers. So that's why I'm doing the strip sets and the high reps. And then other days I'll just concentrate more on strength. So like I said, you go back and forth and that's how you really gain muscles in natural bodybuilding. You don't just stick to one type of rep range all the time. And I'm feeling the pump pretty good here as I'm leaning over and getting a little bit of ab workout and stretching that long head of the tricep. And after I do this, then I'll move over to legs. As you can see here, I'm just going for the pump once again. I'm just going to be doing some light weights tonight, probably about seven or eight plates on each side. I'm just warming up still. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get those quads loosened up, you know, to get the little burny burnies out of them and a little tightness out of them. And then I come down about 90 degrees of the knee, maybe a little bit less. Now, this is the thing I was talking about in the last video where I talked about not rounding your lower back. Some guys will come down lower and then what they'll do is bring their bum off the pad in order to do this. And that will put a lot of stress on the lower back and probably tweak a vertebrae or herniate a disc or something. So it's a big no-no. And the other thing that people will do to come down lower is that they'll bring their heels off the pad of the leg press in order to do so. And that'll put a lot of stress on the knees and it'll be exponential. So it'll mess your knees up. And then another thing people will do also is bring their feet lower down on the pad and just focus just purely on bending the knees so much. So there's a massive amount of stress also on the knees. So that way they can come down a little lower and get a, a better angle in the knee, right? So say they want to bend more than 90 degrees. Now, again, this is going to depend on the person. I find each person again, depending on how you're built, you're going to find a different range is going to be the best way to keep that tension on the muscle and a lot of the tension off the actual joints themselves. This is the tension that I like the best. I find that it's, it keeps that muscle belly really tight and it gets me into that deep, deep burn, uh, without joint pain. So this is the way I've really landed on leg pressing. This is the way that I like the leg press. I find I can use the most amount of weight for the most amount of reps with the least amount of injury and the most amount of growth in the legs. And my legs are pretty much at the maximum size they were when I was competing at a high level. So it seems to be working really well. So anyway, the bottom line is it boils down to that paying attention to the body again, paying attention to what you feel, where is the stress in your body? Where are you feeling it? And if you're feeling it in the knees purely, then perhaps there's a technique change that you can do in order to make sure that you're actually stimulating the muscle and not just beating the crap out of your joints. Okay. 
this was my last and final set of leg presses. I only did about uh, four or five sets of leg press, but that's basically what my goal was to get in and out of the gym, do a little bit more volume, but easier type exercises. I find squats and compound movements like deadlifts and stuff are much harder than leg press, but at the same time, leg press can make your legs scream. So I did a little bit of calves after this, uh, but I won't bore you with those details and I won't show you that footage, but thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed this vlog and got something from it and take care for now.